Driving through Europe, you pass through many small villages. Rarely are they destinations. But this idyllic hamlet in northern Poland is quickly becoming a GPS favorite due to a haunting discovery. This grave has really awakened the interests of everyone. <laughs> Professor Dariusz Polinski is the lead archaeologist from Nicholas Copernicus University in Torin, Poland. He and his team were excavating the site of a cemetery from the 17th century when they unearthed the unimaginable. We found a female skeleton with an iron sickle around her neck and a padlock on her toe. When news broke, headlines described the shocking find as a female vampire. Until the 19th century, people used to believe that vampires are uh, one of the most active demonic creatures. Olivia Gemza is a folklore expert and educator at the Ethnographic Museum in Torin. While the burial scene with the sickle and padlock is unique, it's not uncommon. In the Polish tradition, it was uh, very common uh, to put a sickle over the neck of the person who could be a vampire. Because if the person will wake up, then uh, the sickle will cut off his head. Professor Polinski shows me the lock that was on her big toe. It's a small lock, no chain, it wasn't meant to restrict movement. There is a belief that the good soul uh, exists in a big toe. Some people uh, believe that if they want to neutralize a vampire, it would be good to put a lock on the big toe so the soul will never leave the body. In order to uncover more pieces of this puzzle, the archaeologists take me to the spot where her remains were found. Right here, overlooking the quaint village of Pien. She has been laying just two feet under soil locals have been farming for almost 400 years. As we were shooting this, a couple curious villagers stopped by. Eric took time off from work to help with the dig. When we made the discovery, I couldn't sleep for three nights. It was very exciting. <laughs> Anna and her kids documented the excavation on their phone. More than a sensational vampire story, this is about preserving local history. <laughs> I think this excavation is very important today because after the First and the Second War War, a lot of graves were uh, destroyed. And that's why we don't have uh, a lot of objects, like the real objects, that was connected with the Polish beliefs. And it's the other objects in her grave that perplex experts. She was buried wearing a silk cap with a pillow and thread with gold filament. When you look at all the items, iron sickle, steel lock, satin, and gold lace thread. It doesn't fit the typical profile of a vampire burial. She belongs to higher class of this community, but also it shows that they were really, really scared of her. Perhaps her height was off-putting. The average female was 5'5". Five five. She was six feet. Other oddities include her upper palate was green and back teeth were stained a dried blood brown. For these scientists, getting to know the real woman is a priority. We're going to perform DNA tests in order to reconstruct who this woman was, what she looked like, her medical condition, and what possibly could have frightened the community. While people love a good vampire story, I am Dracula. And Hollywood has raked in billions telling them, Olivia Gemza, the folklore expert, feels lessons from our medieval past are still relevant. It's something unusual to find a grave of a vampire. People can start to consider why somebody could do something like this to her. We also treat different people. We don't look at them as we should. As for these locals, the question isn't if there are more just like her so close to their homes, but how many? Reporting in Torin, Poland, Jeff McIntyre.